Greetings, Minecrafters, and welcome to another Minecraft discussion tonight, and we've got another chilly one, though it's not the negative 30, that definitely was like the record for at least for this year anyway, but um, anyway, uh, my name is Kimberly Quinn, and I am thrilled, it is my pleasure to be here this evening uh, to chat about you, to chat, cheese, to chat with you about another Minecraft discussion, remember it's about becoming the boss of our brain, that is a whole just big thing because whatever we allow in the cabeza leads to feelings which leads to actions or behavior so by changing our thoughts choosing what thoughts to let in and choosing what thoughts to stay with literally changes our lives because thoughts dictate our lives it's just it. it's how it is it's that simple didn't say it's that easy but it's that simple okay so today we're going to talk about um life harmony you know a lot of people talk about work-life balance and a lot of I was actually watching a Tony Robbins thing a couple days ago, and he doesn't even, he says it doesn't even exist. Like, there's no work life balance. He, he just re, I think he phrases it as uh, work life integration. That just makes so much more sense to me because we are, you know, spiritual beings having a human, human experience, right? We're spiritual beings having a human experience. So we're sort of continuous. I think about continuous variables as research. I think about continuous lots of things that just, in life, usually it's not just a hard stop and then a start. That's it, Most often it's a kind of continuous thing and things shift and move, but we can't just like snip, snip, snip. You know, it doesn't just doesn't work like that. And so life harmony is what I want to chat about today. So um, I'm going to give a shout out to Sarah Von Brednick. I, I just, I love, she's another one I'd love to meet, but she's author, author of Simple Abundance, which way back when, that, that book's got to be at least a couple of decades old. It's like a daily thing and like uh, just really just food for the spirit. I used, I used to read it every single morning when I had the, when the kids were little. But anyway, I was back into that again. And she had something about, um, she made a comparison to a, to a, like a pianist, like a co concert pianist, like Chopin or, you know, whoever, pick one. And how, like, in our lives, we have to, you know, we learn the individual notes of our lives. And it's a great metaphor, really. And we often are so wrapped up in that that we don't really, you know, sort of learn the rather intentional pauses that are there. And the pauses are just so important. So she, uh, she talks about harmony is what we feel when, when we're in alignment. You know what I mean? Like, we're in alignment. And even if you're not a music person, like, I'm not, I really love music. I will tell you that I was, where was I today? And I was in the Price Chopper grocery store and they started playing Aretha and I was like bouncing all through the produce department. Oh my God, that just, I, she's my favorite. My first Jeep was named Aretha, not I've Oprah, but it was Aretha. A little sidetrack, but anyway, bounce, bounce, bounce because music does that to us. So it's a really great, it's a really great metaphor for life harmony because we're bounce, 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 and then we also need the pauses, and that can be really tough. So we've got, you know, the family expectations. I didn't want to say obligations because that makes, we love family. Well, not always. <laughs> I should, like, clarify. Let's just say it's a healthy situation. So we'd rather say expectations because there are a lot of expectations on parents and partners and siblings and parents taking care of um, older parents. I've that got that going on with some friends right now, and all different, you know, situations. So there's family expectations, responsibilities of the world. Let's just say that because there's, you know, there's, uh, you know, all the work stuff, you know, the Rona issues and vaccinations, all that stuff. And there's just, the world has lots of expectations. You got to like stop at stop signs or bad things can happen. You know, the, you know, the local popo can pull you over if you do a rolling stop, and blah, 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 blah. So there's all that. And then we've got being along the path of authenticity and, you know, spiritual advancement and self-care and self-compassion and self-love and days at the spa and all that other stuff. They're just so important in learning to practice simplicity, gratitude, mindfulness, all that stuff. And that often takes a back seat because we are too dang tired. We can't even decide what's for dinner or, you know, baked potato or rice. I don't know, honey, pick one. You know, like we're just too dog tired. That's just it. And so we do things, you know, we, so basically, uh, you know, the, these, these, you know, huge needs that just satisfy our souls often, 
often uh, don't make the cut, for lack of a better way to say it. This is definitely true for young mothers. I say young dads, too. It's just I wasn't one of those. I was a young mom. And I do think the expectations are different for moms, even though it's 2022. I'm just putting that out there. You, Because you're supposed to be last on the list. That's that's it. But you can get so run down as a young mom um, up with the you know the feedings in the night and all the, you know, and you got to really, really focus on... Um, also, in addition to taking care of that precious baby little cherub, taking care of yourself the best you can. Emphasis on best you, best you can. I remember feeling like when my husband came home, like 15 minutes in the bathroom alone, like, ah, you know. And I love, all, the sun rose and set on all five, and still does, on our five now young adults. And you need that hot bath or the walk with your you know, women friends or men friends or anywhere in between friends and, and, and to get a, you know, a haircut by yourself, you know what I mean? Like you need, you need that time. And so I guess we're saying, and again, I, I remember this from clap. We called it clapping for credits at St. Mike's. It was a, like a music appreciation. I forget what the title was. We called it clapping for credits because it was loads of fun, but really, really easy. We all just enjoyed it a lot. And I remember when he gave us examples, he was so awesome. Dr. T Tortolani. Tortolani. I don't know. He was so great. He, I, he, everybody loved him. Anyway, we just really liked it. And I remember learning about dissonance. And he, he, like, he played these lovely, you know, Mozart, Chopin, even Gregorian chant. I actually love that. But it had like a flow, you know, symphonies of a flow. And they, then he would play a fugue. And, and though brilliant masterpieces, I remember I was like, Ugh. it felt like being screamed at as a teenager or something. I don't know, like masterpieces. But that dissonance, you know, like. It, I mean, it was a little better than the squeaky clarinets in the fifth grade, I guess. But, you, you know, that dissonance and that, we feel that on a spiritual level when we're out of alignment. And anybody who's been a young parent knows what it's like to feel out of alignment. But you don't have to be a young parent to know what it's like to feel out of alignment. You can be in between jobs. You can be in between just big steps in your life. Like, you've, like, life, like, you, like you've got the job, maybe you're going to graduate school, whatever, but you've, you're in between stuff or you're in between relationships or you're, and there's just a dissonance and you start to have that conversation. Usually there's a conversation that's brewing long before whatever it is changes. You just kind of like, you know, when you're driving in the shower, just kind of like, <clears throat> okay, so that was a little hiccup there. Same reason, too much or not enough storage in my phone. So we're talking about the metaphor with, with learning our notes in, in life and then you know, sort of embracing and learning the pauses in between. Being able to recognize them, that's the only way we can reside there, is to learn to recognize pauses and to learn to hit the pause button. And so this is interesting. Everyone who knows, I think anyone, everyone who knows me, knows that that is one of my biggest challenges due to being in the Fast Mind Club, because I refuse to say ADHD, because disorder, disorder is just a dumb shame word. It's just stupid, stupid, stupid. So the Fast Mind Club is way better. And since I'm a card-carrying member of the Fast Mind Club, Hitting the pause button is hard, though I've learned within my wiring to be able to push it more than I used to be able to push it. So progress, not perfection, right? Because we need these pause moments, like cognitive white space. You know, like laying on the, actually I do this, I do this snowshoeing. It's also very fun in the summer um, when you lay on your back in the grass like, like, like a little kid and you look at the clouds and make shapes and animals. And I was convinced, I saw humpback whales in the clouds a bunch of times and like the ocean is in my future and you know it was so there you go um and we need time to just reflect and we t and need time this is mindful re mindful re reflection because it's intentional we're not talking about autopilot making shapes in the clouds is healthy and good and fun and imaginative and when we allow for that white space i think like i've told you um whoops dark over there um because it's nighttime is is that um, this is when creativity comes to us, and when I actually uh, it came to me, I can't take credit for it because it just came to me. The name Mindcraft, right before a huge meeting, I was just saying this to our dean like two hours ago. It came to me like out in the woods with little G, when right before this pressure meeting, stuff just comes to us. But we need that white space. We need time. The brain needs time to not be on. I mean, it's always on because it's always running, right? But it needs time to just mindfully mindfully allow or allow the creativity and we're not talking about again not autopilot but you know reflection and thinking about things and this this dissonance that we feel is what we feel when we're out of alignment when our lives take over 
and you know the expectations and all these things take over we I know I feel it so I was thinking about you know the clapping for credits class we took with Dr. Tortolano that was his name I think I said it wrong he's a wonderful man and you know when when they played the fugue it was like it riveted right through me I didn't even know the names of the you know the composers who did it it just it felt like it just roar it was brilliant brilliant masterpiece but it wasn't like bouncing to Aretha I also am a big fan of Mozart, actually, when it feels smooth, you know. The fugues are like the fifth grade squeaky clarinets, and the fifth grade squeaky clarinets are what we feel like, although they're endearing and we clap wildly because they're adorable. They're what we feel like when we're not in alignment. When we're not in alignment, or the fugue feeling, it's just like the rah, 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 you know, just, no, as it was Beethoven, I didn't mean that, but the fugues are just like intense. They don't feel like you want to bounce or relax or read or take a nap. They just, for me, they hurt my head. So this is like what we're talking about with a spiritual or an emotional fugue. Don't want that. So we have to learn to really find the smooth dips and pauses in our lives because it's just so important. We need to learn to, what else did I write here? Uh, nah, nah. So, oh, and this is a good tip. So actually listen, go ahead and listen to classical music or um, whatever genre that's as long as it's soothing and calming that's the main thing and this can maybe help you get into the zone with your own life because we need those pauses also to figure out what's working and what isn't you know and so we can live deliberately instead of just being on autopilot which is bad 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 because then we keep doing what's not working okay that's just how it goes and not making changes and not embracing our life minutes and spending them like they're cash we want to live deliberately so that's it Work life harmony. Let's just say I don't want to say that. I want to say life harmony. Life harmony. Be in harmony with your life with this beautiful melody. This beautiful melody of life. This is Kimberly Quinn signing off from Northern Vermont. Have a mindful, very harmonious day.